Welcome back, friends. I've got a really cool thing I want to show you guys. Let's start with a hypothetical what-if situation. Think about your own computer or computers that you have at your home for personal use. Man, if you're like me, you may have years and years of family videos and precious photos from vacations and memories. There's a lot that we trust the hard drive of our computers to keep and keep safe. Imagine if you're a small business owner and you're running a business. Maybe it's a retail shop or you have an office uh, off-site and it's not necessarily home-based. It may be way over yonder. What would happen if you lost your hard drive, if your hard drive to your business computer just completely crashed such that the data was irretrievable? It would be a really bad day. It would be devastating. For today, we want to talk about how to do a best-in-class backup. And we're going to do an unboxing of this external hard drive. All right, without further ado, Let's get right to the unboxing and the setup with the Apple Time Machine. Okay, so your Amazon package just arrived. You've got your two uh, external hard drives. I'm going to put one of them aside for now. Okay, so now we're going to take our scissors and we're going to just cut this piece of plastic tape right here. So even with this particular manufacturer, there are a number of different types and shapes and sizes and specs. So you want to make sure you get the best, okay, in terms of external hard drives. So let's go ahead and open this up, and I'll show you what comes in here. All right, we're going to take this out. So let me show you what comes in the box that's really essential. First of all, we've got these two pieces of plastic here. And if we just peel it open, just like you're peeling an orange, this is the part you want to maintain. This is the important part, right? Now, very, very simple. We've got USB-C, right? That's C, and that's going to plug into the back of the... Uh, computer and it's just going to plug right in here on this end. So we're going to put this here. All right, snaps right in. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set this casually right here and we're going to switch angles and I'm going to show you uh, how to plug it in on the back. It wants to push that way. There we go. Nice and snug. And now if you come back here, you can see that little light flashing. Now before we get into the virtues and benefits of why I really trust an external hard drive more than I trust a cloud-based backup where you, you trust some service provider up in the cloud to handle all the backup. I'm going to have in the description below a link to a separate video on cloud-based backups. The pros and cons with cloud-based. Now I would not trust cloud-based for my primary backup. It should be tertiary or secondary. The primary backup that I'm going to recommend is using this. What's amazing is this has five terabytes of storable data. That's five trillion, with a T, trillion bytes of data. You can have multiple home computers. Maybe you have a couple of laptops. Maybe you have a couple of desktops. You can back them all up to this drive and back them up multiple times. And similarly, you can do the same with your work computer if you own a small business. Now, I'm going to put a link below, very important, if you want to order one of these and know that you're ordering the exact specs that I am recommending as of the time you're watching this video and getting the best price for this unit, click the link below to do your ordering. And when you're ordering, make sure you don't just order one. I'm going to tell you why you want to order at least two, probably four if you're a small business owner. If you work for somebody else and all you have are personal computers to back up, just get two of these because you want to have multiple redundant backups of your various home computers. One day, let's say Monday, you might do a backup on this drive. And then on Tuesday or Saturday, you might want to do a separate backup, a redundant backup with drive number two. Okay, so here we are. And uh, we can go ahead and use our mouse. And what we want to do is we want to go into the time machine. So I'm going to click on System Preferences here, and you'll notice Time Machine's right down here. Again, a lot of people have seen this icon, but maybe they've never, uh, never used it. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. All right, and notice that we have here. Now this is a reference to an older backup, so disregard what you see there. We want to introduce this new hard drive, so I'm going to hit Select Disk. Okay, and notice I've got one right here under available disk. So that's the old one. This is the one that you'll see because it'll, you won't see this. You'll see available disks and then you'll see five terabytes. So let's click on that. 
Okay, so let me point out this reference to encrypted backups. So your backups to your hard drive, your external hard drive, can either be encrypted, check the box, or non-encrypted, leave it unchecked. Encrypted means um, that it's password protected. Only you know the password. For Pete's sake, don't lose or forget the password. Uh, the benefit of that, the pro and the con, the benefit of that is that when it's encrypted, um, if you lost your external hard drive, this portable one, and it fell into the wrong hands, no one would be able to access the data because it's super encrypted with a password. So that's a benefit. The disadvantage with encrypting, though, could be that in the future, depending upon your operating system, if you're trying to use your, your portable hard drive, uh, let's say it, it didn't get lost or stolen, and you're trying to use it to actually restore to a future generation computer or a different operating system, or maybe from Mac to PC or that kind of thing, you may find a little bit of a challenge because if it's encrypted, you could run the risk that that encryption software is so outdated that the future technology can't read it. I mean, that's Maybe rare, but um, it is a possibility. So what's the alternative? If you leave it non-encrypted, which is the way that I prefer to do it, um, it just means that you really have to just guard this little physical hard drive. Don't lose it. Um, know where you keep it in your, in your home safe, your fireproof safe, or whatever. So for this one, I'm going to make sure I've selected this so it's blue. I'm going to leave it unencrypted, and I'm just going to hit Use Disk. So you notice that we get the option of continuing to use that old hard drive, which was this one here, or the brand new one that we're installing here. And we can rename this later if we choose. Well, let's go ahead and hit Use Both. Now notice here, in order to marry it up so that the new external hard drive is going to be able to be used with this awesome app called Time Machine, we need to be willing to erase and reformat this Lassie drive. And that's okay, because that's the brand new one. That's not the old one. We're going to go ahead and, ahead and hit Erase, and here we go. All right, and now you notice all of a sudden we have this particular drive, and notice on my desktop we've also got an icon there. One of the other things I want to show you on the Time Machine is notice that it's setting up with a default to backup automatically. That may or may not be something you want to do. This is a box to definitely check. Show Time Machine in Menu Bar, and that's up here at the top. And this is the icon that I wanted to show you right here. I pretend that this was not selected. Okay, so we'll close that out. You plug in your external hard drive into the back, all right, and then you'll come up here, click this, and say Backup Now. Okay, now you're wondering what's happening. You don't necessarily see anything, but what you will see if you look at the uh, external hard drive, and I'll try to zoom in on that, you will see that light that's on and flashing, that's indicating that data is transferring, so you know that's working. And the other thing you can do to monitor the progress is click this again. Here we want to just open that. Open Time Machine Preferences and notice the progress bar. We're about 470 something megabytes out of this as the total amount to be backed up. All right, it's backing it up to this drive. It's calculating the time remaining. Now depending on your speed, of your computer and how old your computer is. This computer right here, by the way, is, I'll call it middle-aged. It's about, it's 2017. We can test that because we can come up here to the Apple. We can hit About This Mac. And we can go to see the birth year, 2017. So it's middle age. All right. We're still, it's still trying to calculate time, but that's never going to be a dispositive number. Sometimes it'll show you a really long time frame, sometimes in terms of days and, and a significant number of hours. And sometimes it does take overnight if you have a lot of data. But notice here it's saying about two hours remaining. That's not necessarily going to take two hours. Okay, so just to wrap up, so what we've done is we've connected the external hard drive, we've unboxed it, we connected it to our Mac computer, and we ran a Time Machine backup, and we know that it's complete because it says right here that the most recent backup to the external hard drive was today, and here was the time that it completed. So that's awesome. Now, in the next video, by the way, you're, you're definitely going to want to check the next video 
It's called Time Machine, Time Travel. That's the name of the video. Because what I'm going to do in that upcoming video is show you exactly how to travel back in time to restore some missing documents. Or let's say you lost a photo. You can't find that critical PowerPoint presentation. It's deleted. It's disappeared. It's not in the trash basket. How do we, try, how do we time travel? How do we go back in time? I want to show you how cool that is. So make sure you don't miss the next video, Time Machine time travel. Now before we end this video, I want to show you a couple of neat things. So you notice I've got a desktop icon here and I showed you that earlier. Don't be surprised if depending on what your settings are on your Mac, you're not able to see any external hard drive icon. Sometimes that won't appear anywhere on your desktop. But one of the things I want to show you is if you click the finder window down here in the bottom left corner, notice right here this will always tell you if the drive is connected or not if you see the drive by its name here notice the time machine icon there it is there's the actual drive now if you wanted to eject the external hard drive what you don't want to do is just unplug the cable that's not a good idea you want to eject it right so what do you do you can either click this eject icon here or you can right click with your mouse if your mouse is correctly configured and you can hit eject and then the name of the drive here. The other thing you can do is if you do see it on your desktop, you can right click and hit eject here. Three different ways to do that. Be aware, sometimes when you eject, it's half a second or a couple seconds, and sometimes the eject process can take several minutes. Not a big deal. Last thing, if you wanna rename the drive to something that works more for you, right click on the drive right there, and when you see where you see rename, and then the standard name of the drive, just left click on that, becomes blue here you can give it whatever name you want once you're done with that just click off of it it'll save the name to your drive and now your drive will have a name that you've chosen uh, to give it so a couple things remember check out the next video i'm going to show you how to use the time machine so you can do time travel and that is going to be a really awesome tool it will be a game changer for you if you ever lose some critical photos videos or documents and you can't find them because they're gone forever so Let's go ahead and eject and check out that next video. Here's the link.